Welcome back to Challenge Dubai. My name is Bob Babbitt, and with me, the woman who was second at the Ironman World Championship last year, Daniela Reef, and won the Ironman 70.3 World title. How are you doing, Daniela? I'm good, thanks. Wonderful. I, I, we were just chatting. I had Brett Sutton on my radio show not long ago, and he talked about trying to balance having you train for both Ironman 70.3 and for the full Ironman, and he said, which I thought was really interesting. The focus was to focus on 70.3 worlds because if you did well there, you'd be excited to go to Kona. But if you went into 70.3 worlds, maybe with a little too many miles in your legs and didn't do as well as you wanted to, you might not have even gone to Kona. Yeah, he's uh, certainly the one, you know, who can prepare you well for the mind as well. Yes. And um, I think it worked pretty well. I mean, I was, um, I was doing a lot of miles in the early season and yes. then we just raced a lot. So we had to kind of make a good plan to uh, you know do all the races yes. and um, he he certainly did a really good job and um, I kind of did what he told me and uh, it worked well so when you come off of winning and not many people have done that when you win Ironman 70.3 worlds and then a month later lead for a big chunk of that day and get second do you come away from the season going oh my god this was a great year or because the last event you wanted to win so badly you come away going oh, I'm not as happy as I as I should be well, I mean, I went to Kona to really, you know, get everything out, out of me, what yes. is possible. And for sure, I was a little bit disappointed in the beginning to not be able to win because I was, you know, I had the chance to win. But then um, when, in, when I look back now, I mean, I did the best possible what was um, in me. So I think uh, I can be really happy with my last season. And um, I was really surprised racing that much. And then having so many races, not being that tired after the last race. So I was actually even... I was even wanting to go, you know, keep on going to Bahrain and do the challenge. Yes. And um, but then I realized it might be better for this season to, you know, put it down a bit and uh, have yeah. a rest and go back to uni. Actually, I had to do some. Oh, you're lot back of in her. school, oh, right? Yeah, I, I am, now, what's, yeah. What are you getting your degree in again? Um, food science and management. Okay. So yeah, I missed five weeks for Kona. So when I got back from Kona, I had to study quite a bit to actually, you know, keep up with the other ones again. Did you have to get a note from Brett Sutton to give to your teachers <laughs> to tell them why you weren't going to be there? Yeah, they were quite supportive, actually. Were I, they? Yeah, and um, my, my friends at uni, you know, they helped me out a bit too, so they got all my stuff. Yes. And uh, so I just had to, you know, study it for the exams. And yeah, I was I did okay. I mean, you know, you have to do, you have to do compromises. My right. focus is on triathlon and I do uni for fun. So yes. it's for my balance and um, just because I like it, yeah. You're such a strong cyclist and with a 20 meters draft zone here, right? And they're talking about being really windy on Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm betting you might like that. I do, definitely. Um, I think it's a great chance for us, for good riders, you yes. know, to actually have a fair race. And um, yeah, and he actually, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be behind someone. I hope right. not, I'm gonna try to go hard. Yes. But I think, um, for especially when it's windy, it's yes. you know the strong girls have an advantage, and um, it's technical too. So I think um, it can, it's going to be an interesting race with the 20 meter, and um, I think the you know the strongest can really win. Yes. So that's um, and strongest and the fastest, exactly. and um, that's a good good thing. When we watch the Bahrain race, and people can say they're going to enforce 20 meter draft zones, but it looked like a time trial. I mean, people were so yeah. spread out; it, it was probably the cleanest race I've ever seen from that perspective. Well, that's, I think that's great for the challenge to do that. I think it should be, more races should be like yeah. this. Um, 20 meter is still, you know, able to, you know, pass someone. And um, yes. I think it makes it just a fair race. And um, I mean, you know, in running, you, you have to do your job too. And uh, I think for the cyclist, uh, it makes it fair. And yes. um, so to be able to have such a, a possibility for, as a pro, you know, to have the gaps between the men and then the age group, it's, um, it shows that the sport gets more professional, and I think that's how it should be. Speaking of more professional, the the uh, Triple Crown. So does that change the way you look at this season, the fact that you're starting now, say you win this race, and potentially could win two more races and make a million dollars? Does those races become a little higher priority? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a pretty amazing opportunity for yes, us, you know. Yeah. And um, For me, I think I, I'm going to focus on the Triple Crown anyway. Um, okay. For me, it's... I believe it's a good good setup um, to race here in Dubai from Europe. It's even it's not that far, and um, going to Oman will be definitely possible. Yeah. Um, if I you know I see after that race how it goes, and then um, I'm definitely 
trying to put it in. I think with, with the setup for Kona, it will be um, definitely possible to uh, also have three good races in the in the triple crown. Be working some speed, getting ready for Kona. Exactly. Yeah, I think you should, you know, always keep it a bit different. I think that's what Brett did last year with me. I yes. did 5150. I did half. I did Ironman. I did even sprint race. And yes. I think um, that that switches around and makes you not bored, you know, so you always get something to focus on. And I think sometimes when you start thinking of yourself as an Ironman person, you start replacing hard intensity with longer distance, which doesn't make you any faster. No, I mean, I already, like after Kona, I, I was struggling a little bit, actually. Yeah. I, I am, I've never had that to actually run a marathon so hard. You yes. know, in, in Zurich, I wanted to be with quite comfortable and I felt really good. In Kona, I gave everything I had and to run a marathon, everything you have is really, really hard, hard on your body. And yeah. um, so it took me a while to, you know, to get back up to it. And um, but I think I'm quite a strong girl. And yes, so I, I, I hope I can handle it. And um, I'm definitely going to be love around it. for a few seasons, hopefully. Yes, yeah. you will. <laughs> Daniela, thanks so much for taking time. I, I love your energy. Love, how, love to have you in our sport. It's great. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Daniela <laughs> Reef has been our guest. Be watching because she's going to go off the front on Friday and it's going to be a very, very exciting race. Again, this is Challenge Dubai. Bob Babbitt here. Hold on. We'll be right back.